Hey everyone and welcome back to the Dubai Expat YouTube channel. I hope you're all healthy and I'm happy to see you back in another video. Maybe not just another video, maybe the most requested video on my channel for this year. Guys, it is time to make the full collection review and end 2020 with a bang. Before we start with it, I would also like to say a big thank you to everyone who is watching my videos. Watch collecting is for me not about the watches only. For me it is the whole community around it and sharing our passion with others, that is what makes it so great. I love reading your comments, writing with you on Instagram or meeting you guys for a coffee in Dubai whenever you are around. I am just a little bit more than a year in the hobby now and it is awesome what we achieved. I collected the real grail watch for me, built a watch club in Dubai, went on shopping trips with subscribers, had many coffees together with the watch lovers over here and I built this small YouTube channel over the last 12 months. So guys believe me, I am 100% honest with you. But without the community, it would just be half the fun for me. With that, I hope we can push 2021 to the next level, create amazing content and go for more grail hunting out there at all the AD stores. So guys, here we go now, my full watch collection. I will start with the cheaper watches and end the review with my grail piece. So let's put on a watch glove so you can enjoy all the beauties without any fingerprints on it. So the first watch is my Timex Expedition Scout on the green NATO strap. I ordered this watch on Amazon and paid around $40 for it. To be honest, I am not really using it and most of the time it lays in the watch box. I think my field watch phase pulled me into buying this one. Next, we have my Casio G Oak in the military green which I bought mid of this year. It was a fun day at the G-Shock store with lots of cool watches and some of the most friendly sales employees I've ever met. I think this watch became quite hard to get as it is sold out since a few months. I'm not sure if it is limited. During the time I bought it, they had plenty of stock. And I think with the new G-Oaks, Casio definitely made a home run as the design is awesome and the combination of hour and minute hands to the digital display opens a new era of affordable G-Shocks in my view. Here we have the F91W, a big icon of the watch world and probably also the favorite watch of Archie Luxury. But to be honest guys, I have to tell you, I absolutely love this watch. As said, for me, it is an icon of the watch world and whatever other says, I think you can wear this watch if you go out for mountain bike races like I do, you can wear it during sports, you can wear it if you just hang out with your friends, but you can also wear it in the boardroom and no one will ever give you a negative feedback about that watch on your wrist. As said, it's an icon and some of the most famous people of the world are wearing it. And also Casio, I mean, brought the first mass produced, really, really affordable watch with this piece to the markets. And I mean, this is just, yeah, it just stands for itself, the watch. And I absolutely love it because of this amazing history it has. Moving on, we have another Casio, the A500W, or so-called World Time. 
if you want to have a little bit more watch than the F91W on your wrist, this watch combines a very useful world timer with a good finishing in an iconic design. The watch comes at around $50, so yeah, something like five times the price of the F91. And actually this watch joined me on my trip to the United States of America to pick up my Grail watch. Yeah, it was really amazing wearing this piece while I was at an AD buying a Pepsi. Um, yeah, and in addition to this, uh, this watch usually joins me on most of my business trips all around the world because I personally prefer wearing a cheaper watch when I travel to countries where maybe I wouldn't feel comfortable with a Rolex on my wrist. And even though in addition, if I would lose this watch, it wouldn't hurt that much. And also the world timer function is very, very useful. Yeah, and in addition, I love the style of the watch. So for me, it's a big bang for your buck if you pick one of those up. And then another Casio, the A159W in silver, again a retro classic. I also bought this version in gold and gave it to my best friend here in Dubai. So I think if you want to have a very nice gift for a small buck, you can never go wrong with some of these or one of these Casios if you buy them as a gift. And yeah, usually I'm wearing my world timer, so that's why this one is not getting that much, much of a wrist time, unfortunately, but I still like to have it in my watch collection. And my latest Casio purchases, the A168W in a military green Camo design. Again, this watch is a little bit thicker than the classic ones and I just love this kind of pop art that you can find on the dial together with the retro style of the watch. It just looks great in my view. And to have a watch that even gives you more pop on your wrist, I also bought the A168W in gold, as I always wanted to wear this watch in a club while drinking some cocktails or so. But unfortunately, until now, I haven't done so. So probably one of the things for the, the bucket list for 2021. A watch collection would of course not be complete without a square G. I fell for the GM5600B, which is a combination of a resin strap with a high polished metal case. This gives for me the uh, best of both worlds. So you have, as said, something of this plastic resin material with the strap, but on the other hand you have this high polished metal case that just looks amazing. And especially with the green dot camo design on the dial, it, it's just a stunner. In my point of view, it's the best square G you can currently buy. And with the price tag of around $200, it is also really affordable. And with that guys, we finished the economy class of my watch collection, which basically consists out of Casio watches. For me, most or all of them are iconic due to the retro design. Some of those watches wrote really important watch history in the watch world. And I think you can never go wrong with such a Casio watch. 
whether you do sports, as I said, you hang out with friends or if you have a meeting with the CEO of Amazon, this watch will always look great on your wrist. In addition to my watches, I store usually all my accessories in the watch box like additional straps that I bought uh, for my watches or some cufflinks, uh, which by the way I usually never use. <laughs> and as I received also some questions to my watch box, can I recommend it? Um, yeah, I think I can. Unfortunately, the pillows in the watch box are a little bit too hard, so I can't close the bracelets and I have a 6.5 inch wrist. So I can close them, but there would be a lot of tension on the on the bracelets. So I think if you have a wrist of seven inch or above, this is a very nice watch box. For I think I paid something around one hundred fifty dollars. But yeah, if you have a wrist smaller than six point uh, smaller than seven inch, definitely go for something else, or you won't be able to close the bracelets. And now we start the highlight of my collection, the upper level, let's call it the business class. So the first watch is this freshly purchased Timex Q, United Arab Emirates limited edition. At this part, some regards to Bernardo, one of the most crazy collectors I have ever met. He posted this watch in our watch club and suddenly everyone jumped on it and had to get one. It was a really crazy, it was just doing tick 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 and we, we just got notifications of guys doing a watch purchase and I'm not sure how many but in the end I think we, we bought 10 or 12 pieces or so of this special edition. And yeah, there were there was even I think one or maybe two guys that sneaked silently into a mall and had it just a few minutes after Bernardo made the announcement of this piece. Luckily uh, for me, as I was hanging around in the office when Bernardo uh, posted this watch in our group, uh, I had a cool guy from Rivoli who secured one for me, and I picked up the piece later that week then. The watch uh, was released for the 49th National Day of the UAE and if you want to see more about this piece just check out my unboxing and review that I recently uploaded. And now we have a watch with the highest personal value for me. This Zeppelin Dual Time Quartz watch was purchased by me in I think 2008 after I successfully finished my diploma. At that time I had basically no money at all, was living with two friends in an old really shitty flat in a village outside the cities and tried to survive with like three side jobs besides my studies. So I was I think working in a restaurant, I was working in a bar and besides that I was doing a cleaning job at a house that my dad is renting out to other people and yeah besides paying my uh, study fees I was able to save around I think this watch was at the time around 200 euro so maybe something like 230 dollars or 240 dollars or so and yeah I saved the, the money for it and I said okay I'm going to put it into a watch that I will always have a reminder of the time when I successfully uh, finished my diploma and even though uh, it's now 10 years back or so this watch is still with me of course I will never sell it and it's pretty nice to have it again in this video so maybe one day my kids will watch this video and of course I will pass this watch on to them and yeah, they can yeah, listen to the full story of this amazing piece. And yeah, while, while saying that, I'm getting pretty emotional. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just amazing if you buy a watch and you have it 10 years with you and you think about all the memories you, you made with that watch. That's yeah, a pretty amazing feeling. 
Next, uh, we have the Hamilton Kaki Field a mechanical hand wind watch. Actually, my entry into non automatic mechanical watches. Before, I was always thinking, like, okay, you need to buy automatic watches because without the rotor they will start uh, they will stop working and then you need to set them again and so on but over time and especially if you have a watch collection i think it's nearly impossible to wear all your watches uh, without having any any watch uh, setting to the current time again or so and and by that i i learned okay an automatic watch is still always very nice for me, but it's also no big deal if it's just a hand wind piece. And I thought let's start it with the Hamilton Kaki Field, as this watch comes still at quite an affordable price point. I think it's around $500. It has a very nice vintage military design, 80 hours of power reserve inside, uh, I think a very robust uh, ETA movement of the swatch group so yeah overall it ticks all the boxes it looks really cool and if you want to start with a mechanical hand wind watch I think this is the best piece to go for Next uh, we have my Zeppelin Big Date 100 or 100 Jahre Automatic, if I pronounce it in German. Actually the first mechanical watch that I ever owned. I'm still using it for, uh, quite frequently as the watch yeah, just looks good in my opinion. Has an open case bag that shows you the nicely finished ETA movement inside and the leather strap with the folding clasp makes it very convenient to wear. I bought this watch after I had such a good experience with my other Zeppelin, the Dual Time, that I just showed you uh, before. And yeah, by that I trusted into the brand Zeppelin and thought they would give me a good start with mechanical watches. And so I, I bought this watch and the price I paid for it I think is something maybe it was around 600 euro or so so yeah not not sure how much it is currently in dollars but maybe something like 700 800 dollars or so you would pay for it after discount so yeah and again at this point a uh, big thank you to the brand Zeppelin for making great and affordable mechanic watches Next we have the Mido Decompression Timer and guys this watch is such a beauty. I can't say it enough but the colorful dial always gives you good mood. In addition it is such a, such a nice brand that uh, you can only love Mido I think. It was quite a hassle to get this watch even though I was the second uh, one that ordered it here right after the press release. But luckily, in the end, everything worked out. I got the watch, had a great support from the sales employee. So at this point, big regards to Kati, who is working at the Mido store in the Dubai Mall. Uh, she's always super helpful, gives you good consultation of the watches they have over there. And just a super, super nice sales employee for a watch store. So I'm definitely looking forward to meet her soon again at the Mido store and I hope she will stay for a very long time with the brand and I can do some future purchases at her store. Then um, of course a little bit more info to the decompression timer as it is such an amazing watch. It has a rotatable bezel, it can work as, a, yeah, as the name says as a decompression timer comes on this very nice retro mesh bracelet and has a water resistance of 200 meters. The watch is actually limited to 1961 pieces and I got number 589. 
The watch I think cost me around $1,300 or so, but is trading nearly double on the second hand market. In addition, I have a rubber and a leather strap for this watch and I also bought another additional rubber strap uh, on the internet, I think on Amazon or no, no, from Barton watch straps for this watch. So it's also a very versatile piece and again, I just love it. And now guys, we could say we jump from the business class maybe to the first class. So the really, really expensive hitters in my collection. Of course, heavy hitter is, yeah, for everyone uh, a different definition. But for me, all these watches are definitely heavy hitters, as all of them are, in my point of view, very expensive. Starting off, we have the Zenith DeFi. A beautiful titanium integrated bracelet watch with an amazing movement and an open work dial. I pretty much fell in love with this piece the first day I saw it, but it took me half a year or so to pull the trigger. I bought the Defy at the Dubai Mall than a flagship store and I think I paid something around $7,000 for it. The bracelet is such a stunning one with the polished edges and the smooth tapering all the way to the integrated clasp. Now again we have a very special piece for me, the Rolex Explorer, another very emotional piece that I bought in Dubai as a reward for my move from Germany to the United Arab Emirates. After I sold nearly all my stuff in Germany and had only two suitcases left that joined me on the move, I thought I have to or I thought I yeah I have to reward myself with some kind of another milestone piece and of course the first thing that came to my mind was Rolex because if you think of an expensive watch of course somehow we all want to own a Rolex and I did the massive research and in the end I bought the Rolex Explorer for me, the, the Explorer is probably the watch that represents me the most. I, am, I mean, I love nature, I love especially mountains with mountain biking, hiking and so on. In general, I love outdoor activities. And I'm usually also a very easygoing guy. I can hang out with friends in the cheapest bar of the town. Or I can go out with colleagues from work to a very fancy place. And I think so is also the Explorer. It joins you on wherever you want to go. It has a super robust movement without a date function. And by that it will probably also never let you down and is always ready when you are. About the watch, especially I love the thin case and also the simplicity of the watch with a lot of understatement that the watch gives for me. And, and also it comes with so many good features, like the loom is really good on the watch, the clasp is the safety clasp, the, the oyster bracelet feels super sturdy, and that all packed into this slim case is yeah really amazing. 
And and that's probably also why I would not buy an Air King. So the Air King definitely maybe pops more on your wrist. But if you compare it to the Explorer, I would say the Explorer is the calm piece, but the superior piece to the Air King. Let's say it like that. And yeah, I, I always thought about making a video about this topic. So probably in one of the future videos, you will see a comparison of the Air King versus the Explorer. Moving on, we have the Blue Dial Datejust 36. I bought this watch around half a year ago as I wanted to own uh, my first watch with a Jubilee bracelet. Since then, I like to wear this watch for evening activities or going out with friends. It's super comfortable to wear and has a really good balance on the wrist. So I think this 36 millimeter case uh, on the upper part of your wrist and on the lower part, the clasp, yeah, just gives a super good balance. And for, for me, I think it's the perfect piece if you want to have a little bit more bling on your wrist that you would have uh, with the Explorer, for example, but you don't want to uh, go up to the level of a gold or diamonds piece. Unfortunately, on, on this piece, the clasp and pretty much everything on the watch scratches super easily. Also, the, the white gold bezel, I don't know, feels a little bit soft. So actually you have to be careful, I would say, when you wear this watch. Yeah, but in the end, I, I don't care so much about it. As I would say, yeah, the watch is made to be worn and so I do. And yeah, in the end, especially the clasp, I could always let someone polish the clasp. Um, yeah, and, and this watch is just very comfortable. So I really like to wear it and actually I wear it a lot. Next, we have my Submariner Date with the Maxi case that I bought beginning of this year, so nearly a year ago on my last business trip before aviation was pretty much closed. As you can see, the watch is still in brand new condition and has most of the stickers on it. I think the Maxi case and the slimmer bracelet is a big winner to have this watch in, in such a perfect condition feels feels unbelievable yeah as it is discontinued now i got many offers of people who wanted to buy it from me and actually made me really really good offers with a lot of premium on it but let me tell you guys this piece is reserved for my dad um, as i think i told you also in one of the other videos i will probably hand it over to him if i should find a new submariner for myself like the the Kermit would of course be amazing but yeah even though I would say this is probably my favorite model of the Submariner and and so it is also the favorite model of my dad as he was waiting for exactly this model for more than a year at the local AD here in Dubai but in the end yeah he he never got the piece and we found out that his order wasn't even placed in the system a super sad story overall and, and so I think that was the point then when I decided, okay, I'm not going to wear this watch. I will keep it in brand new condition. And if I find, a, let's say, a no date or a Kermit or so for me, I will hand over this watch to my dad. And I promise you guys, I will film the whole experience when I hand it over for you. So that will probably be quite a super emotional video. Yeah. So this is the story behind the Submariner. Yeah, it's a, I'd say a difficult story as it's somehow linked to this sad, sad experience we had at one of the ADs. 
but on the other hand of course I was super lucky to find this at the airport and hopefully yeah the end of this of this piece will have or the, the story of this piece will come to an happy end now guys yeah <laughs> and now guys after all the watches I showed you we are nearly at the end it is time for my grail watch which I still can't believe that I really own this piece if you follow my channel you know this was kind of a community project I used all your advices and help reached out to more than a hundred Rolex stores all around the world I think I had the biggest mobile bill in my whole lifetime and in the end I took a flight all, all the way around the world to pick up my holy grail the GMT Master 2 Pepsi yeah and what what shall I say an unbelievable stunning watch with an amazing history the biggest banger you can probably buy from Rolex maybe some will say the Daytona for me it's probably the GMT Master in addition all the memories I made with this amazing watch so yeah I'm pretty pretty speechless still when I think about what just happened when I picked it up <laughs> it's it's crazy and yeah just just let me say again a big big thank you to the AD where I bought this piece I I hope he will watch this video and I'm I'm sure we will have a great future with many more watches to follow so yeah this is it guys my personal watch collection after being close to two years in the hobby now or let's say one year since I bought my first luxury watch which was the Rolex Explorer if you want to see my progress that I did over the last year I will put you the link to my last um, yeah, state of the watch collection into the video description it will probably be very funny for you to check out this uh, video I was such a noob at that time in the watch world and I think also the, the quality was not, uh, the video quality was not on the level on which the videos are now. So it will definitely be a cool experience if you check out that video. And as I said guys, I'm looking forward to a great 2021 together with you. To many adventures and amazing stories we are writing together on the YouTube channel. And with that, I hope you liked my video again or as always if you do so leave me a comment a like and share the video with your friends thank you very very much for watching i wish you all a wonderful rest of the year and hopefully see you in my next video until then stay healthy and bye bye <laughs>